Hello and welcome to Nurses Handbook. Today we will be discussing about injection erythropoietin which is widely used in several disease conditions. RBCs are produced in the bone marrow. In order to make RBCs, the body maintains an adequate supply of erythropoietin which is a glycoprotein that is produced by the kidneys. Recombinant erythropoietin which is known as erythropoietin stimulating agents is a man-made version of natural erythropoietin which is formulated as a sterile, colorless, isotonic buffer solution which can be administered intravenously or subcutaneously. These injections are available in pre-filled syringes. Now, let us see the mechanism of action. Injection erythropoietin stimulates erythropoiesis by the same mechanism as endogenous erythropoietin. Normally, when there is a lack of oxygen or decreased oxygen in the body, kidneys get stimulated to produce erythropoietin which in turn stimulates the bone marrow to produce more RBCs. In conditions where body is not able to produce its own erythropoietin, then injection erythropoietin is given. Now comes the pharmacodynamics. It is seen that there is an increase in the reticulocytes within 10 days of administration of injection erythropoietin followed by increase in the RBC count. Secondly, it is also seen that hemoglobin and hematocrit also increases within 2-6 to six weeks after the administration. Moving to the pharmacokinetics of this drug. When this drug is given subcutaneously, it reaches its peak after 5-24 to 24 hours. When administered intravenously, its elimination half-life ranges from 4-13 to 13 hours. Remember, half-life is approximately 20% longer in CRF patients than in healthy subjects. Now, let us see the indication and its usage. It is given in Zidorudine treated HIV infected patients as in these patients anemia is common which is a result of insufficient quantities of erythropoietin or maybe because of bone marrow unresponsiveness to the hormones. In chronic renal failure patients as their kidneys are not able to produce erythropoietin. In the treatment of anemia, it is given in patients receiving chemotherapy to prevent anemia. It is also given in patients undergoing elective non-cardiac and non-vascular surgery to protect or prevent allogenic red blood cell transfusion. Allogenic transfusion means when a donor and a recipient are not the same person. The contraindications for the use of injection erythropoietin are 1. Cancer patients receiving hormonal agents, biologic products or radiotherapy. Second is, again, Cancer patients receiving myelosuppressive chemotherapy should not be given this injection. Third, the patient willing to donate autologous blood. Fourth contraindication is a patient with uncontrolled hypertension. Fifth contraindication is if the patient develops pure red cell aplasia, especially after receiving any erythropoietin protein drugs. Sixth contraindication is when patient is hypersensitive to mammalian cell derived products and human albumin. Now coming to the side effects. The major side effects includes chest pain and breathlessness, flu-like symptoms in some patients, headache, pain and redness and swelling in the arms or legs, high blood pressure and weight gain. Now let us discuss about the preparation and administration of this drug. It may be given either intravenously or subcutaneously. Do not shake or freeze, rather it should be stored in a temperature ranging from 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. It should be kept away from sunlight. If the preparation is having any particulate matter or discoloration, it should not be used. This injection should not be diluted with any other drugs or solution. Coming to the laboratory monitorings. Before and during erythropoietin treatment, we should check for the transferrin saturation and serum ferritin level. And if serum ferritin level is less than 100 mcg per liter and transferrin saturation is less than 20%, then administer supplemental iron therapy, then plan to give injection erythropoietin. Monitor hemoglobin levels weekly until the level is stable. What is to be done in case of overdosage? Actually, overdosage can result in polycythemia. So, check for HP levels and if it is more than the targeted range, 
hold injection erythropoietin till the hb levels come normal then it can be resumed at a lower dosage if polycythemia continues phlebotomy may be done now coming to the most important part that is the nursing consideration while giving injection erythropoietin there are several safety issues with erythropoietin stimulating agents it increases the risk of venous thromboembolism so always look for symptoms like leg pain or tenderness of the thigh or calf unexplained shortness of breath rapid breathing chest pain etc monitor hemoglobin level as it may cause a rapid rise of hemoglobin which may cause heart attack stroke heart failure and death in some patients it may cause the tumor to grow in cancer patients receiving chemotherapy so in case of any signs the esas should be stopped immediately other than hemoglobin all other blood cell counts need to be monitored to prevent complication the dosing may change depending on the patient's need patients who have the following conditions need to be consulted with their healthcare provider if an esa is being considered as a part of treatment plan such as heart disease high blood pressure porphyria which is a group of disease that are caused by enzyme deficiency seizures an allergy to protein alpha or any other part of this medicine uncontrolled high blood pressure a woman who is pregnant or planning to be become pregnant or breastfeeding mother they should consult with the healthcare provider before taking an esa thank you for watching for more updates like this do like comment and subscribe the channel nurses handbook